Take a look at the symbol. Kind of a weird symbol, right? Looks something like an eye shedding some wedge-shaped tears. The more innovative, crazy ones among you may come up with better ideas. So what exactly does this, um, let's assume it's an eye shedding tears kind of a picture, have to actually do with fractions, decimals, the topic we are here to learn today? I'm going to get to that in a moment. Before that, let me tell you a small story of how we came here. Our ancestors were very efficient in making their lives simpler. From the Sumerians to the Indians, every single civilization put all their intelligence and effort in making their lives easier. And the same goes on for the process of counting and numbering. So the process of quantification had actually begun. And eventually, everything on earth and beyond could be explained with a simple concept of numbers. So you know how the process of numbering had started. But what about those things that aren't whole or one complete entity? Remember the four and a half eggs? We can't just use whole numbers or even integers to represent these. So what exactly is four and a half? What is three by four? These are all fractions. Did you know that these fractions which we take for granted and use as we wish didn't even exist till somewhere around the 17th century. At that time, they weren't even thought of as separate kinds of numbers. They were just used to represent things as part of a whole, just for convenience. Hmm, imagine, let's both imagine that no importance is given to fractions or decimals. Let me throw some numbers at you. 9.8 meters per second, what is that? You must have heard of it. The value for acceleration due to the Earth's gravity without which maybe no one would have been able to design the machines which took human beings into space. Another one, 3.14159. I stopped there, I don't remember beyond that. This is the approximate value for which the number pi, without which we would have never been able to understand the importance of the relation between a circle's circumference and its diameter, or maybe understand why in the movie Life of Pi, the main character Pi was actually called Pi. Have you heard about the golden ratio? It's so special that even many natural elements around you and me employ these ratio in their designs. Take for example the Fibonacci sequence, a mathematical concept that is based on the golden ratio. It pushes the boundary of math, enters the terrain of life around us as well. Take for example the spiral arrangement of plants like closed fern leaves, you call them fronds, the pattern of the shell of a snail, so many more examples I can go on and on, the proportions in the bodies of all living beings and the arrangement of celestial bodies in our universe, all of these follow this beautiful golden ratio. A few artists and architects have even used this ratio in their designs to make it look more aesthetically pleasing. So how did this all begin? Who used them first? Was it always represented this way, the way we do so now? Let's go question by question. Where does the word fraction come from? It's actually pulled out from the Latin word, fractio, which means to break. And that's exactly what we're doing with the number. We are breaking it. As a matter of fact, the Egyptians were using fractions from around 1800 BC. But they were represented in this hieroglyphs that they used to use. Remember that weird eye thing I showed you in the beginning? Let me bring that down and complete that picture for you. Yes, this is how they represented 1 by 5. How is that 1 by 5? Okay, so this was their 1 by 3. So this weird eye thing indicated that the number is a fraction, according to them. But you know what? I'm actually able to guess this pattern here. It seems to have something to do with the number of sticks representing the denominator part of the fraction. So if I am right, this should be 1 by 2, this should be 1 by 3, 1 by 4, so on, so on, so on, so on. This should be 1 by 9, wonderful, we are almost there. And this should be 1 by 10. Oh my goodness, but it's not. Look at it. This is just not going to work. It's just not going to work. So it's just already so complicated enough that they use such symbols, but guess what? They only represented fractions in terms of unit fractions. What does that mean? This means that to show a number like say 17 by 60, okay, 
एक बेनी नंबर आंसर सीनी 17 बाय 60 दे हैव टू रिप्रेजेंट इट एस 1 बाय 12 प्लस 1 बाय 5 दैट बेसिकली मींस अ यूनिट फ्रैक्शन मींस अ न्यूमरेटर हैज टू बी वन इच टाइम सो इन दिस केस द आंसर ऑफ दिस सीमिंगली कॉम्प्लिकेटेड एडिशन इज 17 बाय 60 this obviously is in a very efficient way of representing fractions right after a point it's going to get tedious confusing and frustrating similarly the romans tried something the babylonians tried something else and finally the indians also tried something early indians uh, represented fractions pretty much like how we do now but without the dividing line it was the arabs who came up with the dividing line that separates the numerator and the denominator and finally, we have the fraction, like how we use it today. It looks familiar to you. You're like, thank God, I'm in familiar terrain. But it's not just for calculations and machine designs and such high funda stuff that we use fractions or decimals. We use them all through our life, in our daily life, without even realizing it. Don't believe me? Let me show you. <laughs>